Hey everyone, this is Mike and welcome to my guide to the Cinder Drift Extreme or the Ruby Weapon. Now since my team is still working on E8 Savage, I decided it would be a good idea to do a guide on this Extreme Primal instead. Now first mechanic is going to be doing is Optimized Ultima. This is the Raid White AoE, so just use your mitigation for this one, shields and stuff like that, so that nobody dies. I believe you don't necessarily need shields for it, but the safer the better. And then he will spawn a bunch of Magitech bits around the arena. These Magitech bits do not need to be killed or anything like that. The only thing they're going to be doing is spawn AoEs basically on random players. First big mechanic is Flexi Claw. This is kind of like his signature mechanic that you'll see come back in different forms throughout the fight. And what this will do is it will basically make some AoEs go through the arena. Now these line AoEs that you see are the AoEs that are baited on players. Well, not necessarily baited, they are just targeted on random players. We don't think you can bait these, so just make sure that you move out of these. This will be very important for what is going to be happening with the Helico Claw, what is going to happen right about now. So as you can see, there are three spirals coming from the middle of the arena, as well as three AoEs attached to them. These AoEs will basically follow the spiral outwards and just pulsate throughout the arena. What is very important is that you do not move to the safe spot just yet, because we're gonna wait for the Magitech bits to do their line AoEs first, so we do not bait these AoEs on the safe spots, basically. Line AoEs go out and we move towards the safe spot, which in this case is somewhere around here. So if you look at where these two AoEs intersect right about here, just move a little bit left of that. And then you will be in the safe spot. For the second one, again, wait for the line AoEs to appear and then move into the safe spot, which is slightly left from the intersection. And then there is going to be a last set of line AoEs from the match tech bits this time without the AoEs from the Ruby Weapon himself. And then he's going to go into Stamp, which is a Tank Buster that needs a Tank Swap, because the main tank will get, I believe it's a Blunt Resistance down, so we do need to make sure that the Co-Tank provokes and gets shirked as well. And then we go into the first big Flexi Claw mechanic. This has two different forms, depending on the mechanic that he's going to do after this. So Raven's Claw will spawn a bunch of bridges, or something I guess you could call them, on the arena. But what is very important is that you notice two things. So first of all, there's going to be four long ones and four short ones. So you can basically assign your melees to take the short one, and your ranged to take the long ones uh, for the upcoming mechanic, because that way you can keep more melee uptime. Also very important to note is that the tips of these bridges will explode as well. So as you can see, the Earth's crust is crumbling. This is kind of the AoE indicator. If you're a melee, you can stand on the longer tether, like over here somewhere, and you'll still be safe from the explosion that happens right here. As you can see, there is a small safe spot over here, so you can keep your melee uptime if you want to do so. Now, after he does these explosions, he's going to do one of two mechanics, which will dictate how you need to handle the next set of mechanics as well. Undermine will make all of these bridges explode, so you need to stay away from these tethers, whereas Liquefaction will make it so that the whole arena turns into quicksand, so you need to stand on the bridge. You'll see the second uh, set of that mechanic after this one as well. So, Undermine, everybody make sure that you move away from these tethers. All of the players will now also be targeted with an AoE. This will, will drop three AoE puddles back to back. It's very important that you do not get touched by two of these or that you do not run into any of these because if you run into one of these AoEs, it will explode and most likely cause a wipe. You'll see this happen towards the end of this phase as well where literally only our tanks survive because one of the orbs exploded. And then after this is going to do a Ruby Ray. This is a very wide AoE through the arena from his point, but do know that if, if you are in a very bad position because of where all these orbs are, the orbs will vanish before the Ruby Ray finishes casting, so you still have some time to adjust once the orbs do disappear. And then we have another optimized Ultima, which again is the Raid White AoE. And 
and then we go into the first flexi claw with dashes. For the first one is going to be liquefying everything that is on the outside of the arena, leaving only the inside of the arena as your safe spot. And then he's going to be dashing towards a random edge of the arena as well and start casting Raven's Flight. Now, as you can see, there is a bunch of arrows and markers on the arena as well. Basically, what this means is he's going to dash through the arena until he reaches one of these markers and then he's going to do a certain mechanic. This one is a stun marker, kind of, which you'll see what happens when he gets there. Uh, and this one is going to make it so that he's going to take out one of his two claws, which you'll see as well. So first, make sure that you're in the safe spot, kind of on this side of where he is coming from and going towards will be safe. I am barely in the safe spot here as well. And then we go like this. He's going to pull out one of his two claws, as you can see, it is the left side. Well, it's technically his right hand, but it's on the left side of him if he's coming towards us. So we're going to move towards the right side wait for him to dash past and then he's gonna get onto this stun symbol and give us some time to adjust. So once he does that, now his claw is on this side of the arena so we need to make sure that we move as far away from that as possible. So we all run towards the one side. This will also make it so that the whole arena becomes normal again so you do not stand, the quicksand is gone basically. So everybody runs this side because this is gonna be a big cleave. As you can see a dragoon got hit here. And then now his claw is on the left side again, meaning that we are already in the safe spot for the next dash. Pull the boss back to the middle a little bit so that your melees can keep their positionals. And then we have another raid white AoE. And another tank buster, so make sure that you tank swap for this one, because he does get the blunt resistance down. Now for the next mechanic we're going to be switching into two groups of four and we do these based on the healers. So he's going to jump to a random corner of the arena and he's going to start casting Ruby Dynamics. It's very important that you stand underneath his hitbox because everything else will basically be a big cleave with his claws and then both of the healers will get targeted with a stack marker. So basically split into two groups of four and stack underneath the boss and do not overlap these two AoEs. After this, make sure you heal up as fast as possible because everybody is going to have to move away as well as get some AoEs on them. What we do is we basically spread around on each side of the arena and let him go through the middle because he's basically going to just be slicing and dicing away. Once he reaches the end, there's also some AoE markers with proximity that drop over here as well on both sides of the arena. So just make sure that you're underneath his hitbox or on the other side of the arena as well to take the least amount of damage as possible from this mechanic. Another ruby ray, so just make sure you dodge out of the way of this one. And another raid white AoE as well. And then we are going to be going into the reverse flexi claw mechanic that we got the first time around. Now, I ended up being in the wrong position for this one, so positioning was a little bit scuffed, uh, which is why we're gonna end up wiping, kind well, almost wiping actually, not completely. So again, the tips explode, and since the previous one was undermined, this one is gonna be liquefaction, so instead of standing on where I'm standing right now, we're gonna have to stand on top of these little bridges. So we get our AoEs, liquefaction so we need to stand on the bridges and then we drop our AoEs on here. There is enough space to drop all of the AoEs but since our bard had to or our machinist had to run through one of these this basically explodes and kills everyone except the tanks. Pew! And then you just wait for the orbs to disappear and he does another ruby ray. Now we're not going to see that because we pushed him to 0.1%, which is when he technically dies and goes into the next phase. Um, so you're not going to be seeing the next set of mechanics. Basically, if you do not push him like to death, basically, at this part, he's going to do another ruby ray. So just wait for all the orbs to disappear to dodge the ruby ray. And after that, he's going to do the reverse of this mechanic as well, where he... <clears throat> where he's dashing through the arena. So instead of doing it like this, where the middle is safe and the edges are liquefied, 
the edges will be safe and the middle will be liquefied. So it's kind of the opposite of what he's doing here. But basically that's what would happen if you do not kill him towards the end of this Raven's Claw mechanic. And then once you're done with that, there's going to be a cool cutscene where he transforms into Nail Van Darnus. But I'm going to skip through that because it's not important for this guy. So as we go into phase number two, there's two important things to note. First things first, there is a kill zone now around the arena. So this blue edge will kill you if you stand in it. So don't stand in it. And there's also a checkpoint. So since even though only our tank survived past the first phase, it's still gonna be fine because they can just wall it and we can restart at the second part of the fight. Now, first thing that will happen is all of the players will get either a red or a blue debuff and there will also be a red and a blue ad that spawns on the field. The blue ad will spawn on the right side, the red ad will spawn on the left side. Basically, players that have the red debuff need to attack the blue ad and players with the blue debuff need to attack the red ad. This will always be one tank, one healer and two DPS. After this, all of the DPS will be targeted by Meteor Streams. These are just big AoEs that drop on them. And then after this, they will do Greater Memory, which will spawn two little adds. As you can see, a red and a blue one over here. This one will tether to one of the DPS players, or each will tether to a DPS, and they need to be brought into the opposite add. These will also tether to opposite colored players. Uh, and then after this, they will do one of two mechanics. Either they will both do Iron Chariot, they will both do Lunar Dynamo, or one will do a Dynamo and one will do a Chariot. So it's completely random which of the mechanics you get. Iron Chariot is an AoE around the boss, so make sure you run away from the boss. And Lunar Dynamo is a Donut AoE, so you can stand underneath the boss to be safe or far enough away. If the bosses are East and West respectively, as they are right here, if you're a ranged or a healer, you can just go stand south and you'll be safe from both of these. You don't even have to think about it. If you're a melee, you will need to adjust depending on what mechanic happens. So in this case, they both did Iron Chariot. And after this, the two adds will tether towards the DPS players. I get one of the tethers, for example, so the ad is slowly going to be coming towards me. As this happens, another set of Meteor Streams goes out. And then you now have to try and bait your ad into the opposite boss. Now, what's very important about this ad is that it cannot touch any players because it does. if it does touch a player, it will explode and deal some AoE damage around it. And this will most likely kill some people, so just make sure you don't touch people. Just make it run straight into the boss. Whilst this is happening, both of the tanks will get a tank buster called Ruby Claw. And this will hit a few times, so just make sure your tanks are healed up and have some mitigation going and they will be fine. After this, the ruby weapon will cause change of heart, which will cause greater memory to change the two ads colors. So our blue ad that was on the right, now is going to transfer its debuff to the red ad. So they're basically just going to be switching colors. So what you have to do is all four players need to switch to the opposite ad that they were attacking in the beginning. Again, all the DPS get their meteor stream another Lunar Dynamo or Iron Chariot. Uh, this is only going to be a Lunar Dynamo because the other ad has already died. So it's just going to be Lunar Dynamo here. And then at this point, both of the ads should be about that. We took a little bit longer because we had somebody die. And then it's all about the Ruby Weapon. Negative Aura is just a look away mechanic. So just don't be looking at the boss. And then as you can see, there is also a little countdown on the screen where Dalamut is falling. This is going to be rate-wide AoE damage, so just make sure everybody's healed up. This will also hit a few uh, different times, if I'm not mistaken. Actually, never mind, it only hits once. And then we go into Meteor Project. Now, as you can see, we've had our markers spread out like this. We use these positions uh, for the phase one as well, kind of, for the liquid claws thingy, um, so that we can kind of spread out our AoEs, the red balls that drop. But for this one, we're going to use it for the Meteor project more specifically, and this one is more important than the liquid claws mechanic, I would say, because there's a little bit more wiggle room with the liquid claws. Now, basically, the ruby weapon will target people with Magitek Meteors. And as you can see, we have one, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, and the number eight over here. This will basically be the timer of which they're well, which is going to drop first. So we just all stay in our position. We make sure that the eight one is a little bit closer to the middle than the rest. And there is a specific reason for that as well. So once everybody's dropped their AoE, we all move towards the middle. And then we call out which was the last one that dropped. In this case, it was the one south on D. And then we wait for the next mechanic, which is Screech. This is a knockback, but you can use arms length and sure cost for this. Technically, the way you should handle this mechanic is you get knocked back into the safe spot, but we just used arms length and just moved over to the safe spot, basically so that the melees could keep a little bit more melee uptime. Whilst this is happening, there is a big comet coming down, and this is gonna do some red. well, basically gonna kill everyone that is not behind a meteor. So this is why you need to move behind the last one. Also, because all of the other meteors are exploding at this point, so that's why you want to be behind the last one. So once you light of sight this AoE mechanic, just move away from the meteor because that will be exploding. And then the next mechanic is gonna be for our tanks to handle. There will be two AoEs coming down, as you can see with these lines over here, or with these arrows. And then once they are down, the tanks need to go and stand on them so that they will be taking the combat basically. You do want to be using some mitigation for this, for example the Paladin here is using Hallowed Ground, very good usage of it there, um, but also make sure you have some other cooldowns running like Rampart or something uh, that can tick for a little bit longer than just the Hallowed Ground duration. Because during this our tank is going to be constantly taking damage, so you do need to make sure that they are healed up in time. All of the other players make sure that they basically free the tanks from these comets. Whilst this is going out, the other players, both healers and DPS, will be targeted with AoE, well, basically with markers. And these markers will do line damage from the boss, uh, originating from the boss. Basically, don't overlap these, but more importantly, do not hit the tanks with them. If you hit the tanks with them, they will die. So you can see me and the white mage get one over here. Make sure that we do not hit the tanks. Bam, there we go. And then Dalamut will fall again. So make sure everybody's healed up and stuff like that. And then we go into the next set of Project Meteor or whatever it was called again. Where you drop the meteors and then you have to move behind the final one. But if you've got some pretty decent damage then you should be able to kill it around this time. So that's pretty much the ruby weapon. There is a little bit more basically towards the end before you meet Enrage but I've never seen past this much. So I don't really know how much more there is to see about this fight. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for the Ruby Weapon. If you have any more questions about certain mechanics, feel free to leave them in the comments. Hope it was helpful, and I'll see you in the next one.